All right, it's T-minus 14 days until sick week, and I've got a, a light down there that's heating up a bushing, and that's what's creating this ambiance around me. All right, we're getting ready to put the intake on. Um, most folks say, and even the wind blow instructions say, don't use the cork or rubber gaskets on the end. Use a uh, RTV. This is the first time I've ever bought one of these cans, and I have to say, uh, I'm a believer. I will buy more. So I got ultra gray on the front and back. I've got some... Uh, Edelbrock gasket cinch holding the uh, intake manifold gaskets in place and just a couple bolts to make sure nothing slides. But I'm gonna let the RTV skin over for just a few minutes and then I'm gonna uh, slap the intake on. Nothing stressful about this at all. I'm gonna make sure and put thread sealant on the Inner four bolts, inner four bolts. Keeps the wall from coming up with threads. Work your magic. All right, the engine's waiting on some hardware and some bracketry, so that's had a good stop in place. I'm about to do something I've never done before, and that is tear into a manual transmission. But I, uh, I read the instructions on the interweb, so maybe I can get it right. Ish. Teachable moment. Have you ever been told not to flat tow a manual transmission vehicle with the transmission in neutral? Well, here's why. This is an SM465 out of my 1975 C20. I got the top cover off, so this is a really good opportunity to illustrate this. It's all about oiling. As you can see, this transmission's in gear. Input shaft and output shaft are both spinning. The counter shaft down there in the bottom is also spinning. And that's important because that's where the oil is. It's a splash lubrication system. The spinning gear throws the oil up on top to the main shaft. That thing. So as you can see, they're locked together. Now let's put it in neutral. All right. Now you can see I can hold the rear shaft and turn the front shaft. Now more importantly, I can turn the rear shaft like the drive shaft would if you were flat towing. Now that does spin unless I put some force on it, like I'm the clutch and the engine, and now it no longer spins. I had to enlist the help of some vice grips and a hammer because I've only got two hands. Now if you turn that output shaft now, and the input shaft is not turning. You can see that the counter shaft no longer spins. And that's bad. Still in neutral, but now I'm turning the input shaft. The output shaft is not moving. But you can see now the counter shaft is moving. There's synchros and some roller bearings in here that need lubrication. So, don't think that flat towing with your truck in neutral is the same as sitting with your engine running in neutral. It's not the same. If the engine's spinning the transmission with the transmission in neutral, it's getting oiling. If the drive shaft is spinning the transmission with the engine off and the transmission in neutral, the main shaft is not getting oiled. You should probably consult your owner's manual before you listen to me. Well, I figured out why there was no metal in the oil. It's in the uh, permanent magnet that was right down there. I should probably clean that before I put it back together. Either way, I've got it into all of its uh, major component piece parts, case, uh, main shaft, counter shaft, top covers over there somewhere in that pile. Oh, there it is. Now I gotta start pressing and cleaning and replacing and hopefully get this back together. Maybe I can, uh, maybe I can make a drive train this weekend. All right, it's sick week prep day, I don't know, 20, whatever. Then we got a mediocre small block with a broken main cap and an out of balance rotating assembly, a small blower, and a free demon carburetor that's not nearly big enough. I got a bell housing down here that needs to be painted. I got a transmission case right here that needs to be put back together. All that has to happen today because I got a buddy coming tomorrow and we're putting this motor and transmission back in the truck. Probably won't run for another week or so. I got to do all the auxiliary stuff, but I, I needed some muscle to help get it back in. I'm old and I've already had one back transplant. I don't need another one. And I'm not gonna film this process because I don't have time. But there's already a pretty good tutorial on the YouTubes. I'll 
trying to link that or something. It's Gibbs performance or Jibs. I don't know. I think he's a jarhead like myself. Either way, he did a good job of making like a three or four part series. Watch that. Things have happened. All right, in this together. JB welded main cap. Unbalanced rotating assembly. First attempt at a manual transmission rebuild, but probably good enough. And we got to get it in the truck before the rain hits because my helper's here. I need help. I swear I'm gonna start a header company that builds headers that you can actually get bolts in. Now granted, these are pretty big primaries on a small block, but, but you can't do anything with that back bolt without this special tool here. Do they make Allen head header bolts? Cause I need those. But for now I'm gonna use this hack job open end 3 8 wrench for little people. It's gotta be a better way. All right, T minus six days, it's Saturday. I'm leaving next Saturday for sick week. And uh, we're cutting it close. I mean, All right, for the ignition system, I'm running a standard GMHEI style ignition. This one is from Proform. As it said, race on the box, it was 100 bucks and had good reviews, so I bought that one. I'm also running an MSD 6BTM, which is basically a 6AL type box that pulls out timing based on boost and it's adjustable from zero to four degrees per pound of boost. So uh, we pulled the guts out of this and just put the uh, MSD harness in there. Uh, blower lip motors like a lot of initial timing. So I got the lightest mechanical advanced setup I could put in here. It brings all the timing in real quick. I wasn't gonna run the vacuum advanced, but I think I'm going to. So we'll just have a lot of timing down low uh, for cruising and stuff. And then we can pull timing out up high when the boost goes up with MSD box. All right, major project update. Let's take a look at this engine. Well, it's obviously in. Um, alternator, new reman, whatever. Factory power steering pump. I uh, used the ICT billet uh, accessory bracket kit. I had to use a few 3 8 washers to get that space and shimmed perfectly, but not a big deal. If you can rebuild a motor, you can align belts. Um, obviously the blower pulley, factory other pulleys. Um, that's a race car aluminum bar for the heater hose. That is the temperature sensor for the Mishimoto electric fans. Factory thermostat housing that I painted part of. Uh, one thing to note, you can't pull the thermostat housing off without taking the blower off. So there are some high dollar thermostat housings, but I'm just gonna run this. If it's bad enough, I can take the blower off. It's just six bolts, not a big deal. Let's go to the back of the manifold. And this is really why I waited to put the blower on. I got the distributor in. I've got two manifold pressure ports down here that reference to different things. This single down here references directly to the MSD box that's currently not mounted. It's over there. So that boost reference is to retard the timing based on the boost pressure. And I can adjust that from in the cab. This little Rube Goldberg deal right here, this was the only way I could get four ports on here. Uh, the bottom one that goes to my boost gauge uh, the middle one there that is the vacuum advance reference and this one where you at get too many hoses hoses this one is the boost referenced carburetor that i'm about to build and put on here let's talk about carburetors it's the little box on the engine that meters the fuel and air some of you young guys probably don't know nothing about this that's a carburetor it's actually a free carburetor, surprisingly. Demon 650. It's the wrong carburetor for the job. I really need a 750 for this engine. 350 spinning 5,500 RPMs. Would not normally need a 750 CFM carb, but I've got a blower. So this is gonna be our limiting factor, but that's okay because it was free. <clears throat> yeah, it's dual feed, vacuum secondary. It's got metering blocks on the primary and the secondary 
I got a choke somewhere for this I might need. And yeah, that's the big things. Get yourself one of these carb stands, because if you don't, it won't sit flat, as demonstrated here. Okay, for a roots blower and a racing application, you can just bolt a standard carb right on it and run fine. But on the street, it doesn't work because the power valve doesn't work right. So you have an idle circuit, a main circuit, and an enrichment circuit. So idle circuit is idle mixture. Main circuit is your main jet, so when you're cruising down the highway, steady state operation, that's what's metering your fuel. But when you step on the gas, your enrichment circuit kicks in, and you have your accelerator pumps, and you have your power valve that opens, and that fattens up the mixture under low vacuum situations or under load. This is a power valve. It's in here in the magic box. This is a 6.5 inches of mercury power valve. So what that's saying is, if your vacuum is greater than 6.5 inches of mercury, it will hold this power valve closed. If your vacuum drops below 6.5 inches of mercury, that spring will allow it to open. And then fuel will come through those ports and find its way into those magic holes. Now it's referenced off a manifold vacuum. The problem is it's sitting on top of a blower which always makes a bunch of vacuum and the power valve will never open up. So to get around that, <clears throat> you can add richer main jets, step them up, and it just runs fat all the time and it won't go lean when you step on it. It's fine for racing and it's bad for the street. So what I'm gonna do is some easy modifications to the carburetor to boost reference the power valve under the blower instead of between the carburetor and the blower. So when the engine goes into boost, the power valve will open up and it'll fatten up the mixture. Fat and happy. All right, so let's break this thing down, get it soaking in the parts cleaner, and uh, we'll modify the power valve circuit and then rebuild the carburetor. Throw it on the motor. I got a blower carb, draw through that is. This is the cavity where your power valve sits. Said power valve sits right in there. Manifold vacuum comes up through a hole that I've plugged with JB Weld. So no more manifold vacuum between the carb and the blower. Drilled a hole from the side of the carb into this cavity. Put 3 16 brake line in there. Uh, put some silicone on there and I put the JB tank weld on it. Oh, tank weld. That's what I use to fill the hole and support this. This is not in gasoline, but why not? It's a carburetor. So let's put some tank weld on there. Uh, but that's it. This will reference below the blower on the manifold instead of between the carb and the manifold. And you've got a draw, uh, draw, and you've got a draw through carburetor now. Cost me like 12 bucks.